On this trip, I'm in the Talladega National Forest in Alabama, heading to the Pine Glen Campground. This is Forest Road 500, which is one of the main gravel roads through this area. It's very rough and bumpy and has plenty of potholes. Now, there were times here I had to use four-wheel drive to go up some of the steeper grades. I would guess my average speed was between 10 and 15 miles per hour. Thankfully, the suspension on the Oliver is very capable of handling these rough conditions. Now, this off-grid campground is managed by the Forest Service. I sped this up just so you can see the whole campground loop. I found a spot near the entrance and settled in for the night. Now the weather was really nice. Um, nighttime temps were around 70 degrees, I guess. Um, I wanted to explore the area a little bit the next day. Come on. Well, here I am at the Pine Glen campground. It's uh, boondocking, so completely dry camping. Although they do have a pit toilet and uh, trash cans and numbered uh, campsites. There are, I believe, two other groups of people here uh, while I'm here. But um, I'm all set up. The Pinhoti Trail um, goes right by this area. And there's a sh fairly short walk on the trail where you can get down to a lake. So uh, I'm going to go down to the lake. Um, of course, Oreo can't hike. But I have a little backpack that she rides in. So uh, we'll go do that and uh, check out that lake. The Pinhody Trail is 339 miles long and connects with the Appalachian Trail via the Benton McKay Trail in Georgia. Now, the original plan for the Appalachian Trail included this area, but the effort stopped short in the 1930s. Now, this length of trail follows along the bank of Shoal Creek, Sweetwater Lake, which was my destination, was a bit farther than I thought, and I was not prepared with water for Oreo, so I decided to turn around and head back to camp. This concrete structure I'm standing on was part of the original bridge that crossed Shoal Creek here. This water was clear, cool, very beautiful. I saw a lot of native fish swimming in this in this creek.
think there are maybe three uh, campsites being used here. I guess there's probably 20, maybe even 30 possible sites. You can see quite a few picnic tables and fire rings. Um, accessible from the gravel road, maybe not as many if you're in a camper and you want to not get off into possible mud situation, you would have a smaller number, but uh, if, you're kent, if you're tent camping or car camping, you can, you can probably make it make it pretty easy. It is pretty muddy here. It's uh, got a lot of rain lately, but um, I do have here trash cans. There's uh, a pit toilet uh, right over there. You might not be able to see it. But um, yeah, there's the trusty camper. I'll be packing it up here and we'll move on to our next spot. The road out is just as rough and bumpy as the road in, so it's pretty slow going. But finally we're back on paved roads and headed to Chiaha State Park. Now Chiaha Mountain is the highest point in the state at 2,413 feet above sea level in part of the Appalachian mountain range. The drive up to the park is called the Skyway Motorway and it has some great overlooks in places. Chiaha State Park is Alabama's oldest park, opening in 1933. The first six years between 1933 and 1939, the Civilian Conservation Corps was active, creating a nearby lake and building several structures out of stone, including cabins, pavilions, a lodge, uh, a tower, and several hiking trails. You can see the office and camp store there to your left. I'm going to park over here and pop inside and uh, get a campsite for the night. You can see the hotel to your left it was built in 1973 along with a restaurant and several chalets. Here we're turning into what is called the upper campground. The lower campground is located a mile or so down the road near Chiaha Lake which is about a thousand feet lower in elevation. This is a pretty nice campground. It's got 73 sites with full hookups. Um, I was not able to get any service at all with AT&T here. You can also see some of the white glamping tents uh, that the park has available. Let's 
August 23. This is me right here. I got the Oliver set up in sight and then Oreo and I went over to see the tower that was built on the highest point in the state. This statue commemorates the young men that built the park with the Civilian Conservation Corps back in the 30s. The CCC was a government social program started during the Great Depression to give unemployed, unmarried young men between the ages of 17 and 28 a job and get some needed infrastructure built in areas like Chiha. Uh, the pay for a CCC worker back then was one dollar a day. But the quality of the workmanship of what they built is evident because these structures are still standing and look like they'll continue to stand for many years to come. Next, we're going out on a boardwalk to the Bald Rock Overlook. Now, when I came out here when I was a kid, there was no boardwalk. But now even those with mobility issues can enjoy this great view. Now this location is across from the hotel. There's a swimming pool up here that 
it was full of kids, but every spot around here just has some really nice panoramic views. This is Chiaha Lake um, near the lower campground and it's a very popular swimming spot for the locals especially. Next I left Oreo in the Oliver and went for a hike out to Pulpit Rock. Now the trail here is pretty steep in the beginning so the good thing is you don't often see many people. It's always hard to convey steepness on video, but take from my word for it, it's steep. Before we left the park, I had to investigate the CCC Reservoir. Now this stone structure was used to create a small reservoir fed by a stream. Although the water levels were low, you can tell it's still doing its job by the presence of all these water plants.
Well, that's it for this trip. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to see my next adventure.